humour in football is something we all love. And I think when we speak of the could have been champions, that name is synonymous with humour in footy as it stands today. And Sandy Roberts had the, I think, rather pleasant task of catching up with the could have beens only recently for a day in their lives. Here it is. Right now, we'd like to welcome to the 3AW microphone Sandy Roberts. Come in, San. From Thank the you, from the, from the from the Albert Park Oval too. Direct from the Albert Park ground, and uh, I'm probably in a unique situation because I'm one of the few people. If on some dark, dingy nights where alcohol is served, and you're listening to people like Coves and Tony, a phrase late in the evening tends to ring through, and that is. We made him. We made him, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a little upset because I don't think I'm in that category. <laughs> no, unfortunately no. from Adelaide, I don't think we've actually bunked you up. In fact, you're I think... You're self-made. I, I think by your own uh, help at uh, the Mount Gambier races, now, Sandy... Now, is, uh, I've, just, I've just lost a lot of money. Why is that? Because someone said to me during the week, I said, oh, Sandy's coming in on Saturday. They said, how, how much do you want to bet that by the second question you'll mention Mount Gambier? <laughs> yeah. You know, you're speaking of great people, and you've got to put Kevin Sheedy in that mould. Mm. You guys started... When Sheedy started, that's correct. Sheedy, of course, now as we know, has basically, in uh, equine terms, come from behind and is looking very, very good. Yes. The could have been, I think, can probably the same thing could be said of you. You've won the ratings. Is it, by any chance contract time? Uh, uh, I mean, up, you've uh, got to be looking at something. <laughs> we let other people. You're in a superb position now. Contracts don't really matter. We, don't, that we, much don't, these we don't think about that sort of thing. There's other people do that. Yeah, we got, we've got Ricky Nelson doing it for us. <laughs> <laughs> Coves and Tony, how did it start? Well, it started actually with Simon Whelan and uh, Jeff Richardson uh, having the idea to do a show from a fan's perspective. And in those days, in 1981, I was based in Geelong and used to be on the phone, and I'd never even met them. And so, Tony, how did you come into it? Uh, 1982 for me, uh, I had a mate of mine, Ron Main, who was a plumber, who uh, did the VFA report and he invited me to come along one day and uh, sure enough came along one day and uh, the VFA report sort of grew, in fact it had four, Phil, Phil Cleary and also George Stone. Stoney now, oh, of course, yeah. uh, up helping Rod Eat out, or probably knifing Rod Eat at the moment, yeah. and uh, Phil Cleary just organising all the anti-Republican, anti-monarchists at the moment. And, uh, and the, the true story is that Tony came in with his mate Ron Main and knifed Ron Main. Oh, that's, <laughs> not, that's not true. <laughs> Ronnie, in fact, Ronnie and I, we go to the football every week. I haven't, and seen, haven't seen Ron Main for 15 years. <laughs> oh, that is just Tony took over to do one segment and within three weeks was hosting the show. <laughs> and seriously, a question for you guys. Yeah. Hmm. Have you built up, I mean, you have built up a cult following, but do you still get people that were contacting you 18 or 19 years ago I mean, do you become like family? Do they stay in yeah. touch? You say, you get your mail during the week, oh, not another one from him. Or... There's no, a lot, there's no, a no, lot no. like that. Actually, they're not writing into saying, we won the dozen bottles in the competition <laughs> in 1984 and we still haven't got them. <laughs> what was the brief? What was the idea of the program? What was the aim? The Besides, aim? of course, to sweep all before you in the ratings. No, it was to come on, it was to talk about it from the fans' perspective because all the TV shows were full of people who used to play we pride ourselves on the fact we haven't played the game, but we've seen a few. And I'm Thank not really uh, heavily into any football team. I have a leaning towards St Kilda because my father, when we were on the farm, brought me up listening to guys like Big Carl Dittrich on the radio on a Saturday afternoon, and that's the extent. Of well, I don't want to say too much to our listeners out here, but I have heard the names Roberts and President and St Kilda all just sort of... In one sort of sentence. ...tied together there, and I'm quite sure the whale, when he gets down there, will do an absolutely magnificent... He used to watch World of Sport, and Geelong had had a bad day, and you think Bob Davis was at the Geelong game, he'll defend Geelong, and he would try hard to, but but he was held down by Lou and Jack, and you'd be screaming at the telly, stick up for him, Bobby! And uh, so we thought we've got to go on there and stick up for our own clubs. Sandy, at this point in the in the program, we take a break and then we normally do Tony's footy talk back. Now, would, how'd you like to just sit in and take the calls with Tony? I think it's because an, and it's an essential part of the program. It, it'd be an honour. Oh, is Sandy there, mate? Yes, yeah, Sandy's there, massive. Listening, massive. How are you? Thanks, mate. What's happening? Well, the wheels haven't fallen totally off, but um, the engine's in a spot of bother, isn't it? Oh, mate. Well, first of all, there was. Uh, Jelly, Jelly. Lost the players. Yeah. Had to flick him. Then there was Kenny. He lost the players and had to flick him. Stanny lost the players. I reckon the whole damn club ought to lose the players. <laughs> <laughs> Has Timmy lost the players yet? Well, we call him Tim, actually, Massive. Tim, not, not, not Timmy. I'm going to change my name, too, to Mass. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> rightio. Don't call me Massive. And basically, you're just a group of mates that get together, mm. and you are all good mates. We are yes. good mates. Yeah. 
Yes, we are. Although and we don't knock around together. Yeah. Are you, are you going to interview the other boys separately later? Because they'll probably say they're mates as well, but Tony and I can't stand them, quite frankly. And in fact, to be perfectly truthful, we actually carry them. You are, you are, you are, looking, you are looking at Wayne Carey and you are looking at Gary Abler, the Queen of Beans. Hello. Hello, Tony. Yes. Is Sandy there, Tony? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's uh, well, hello, Sandy. Yes, hello. Who's speaking, please? Oh, it's been a long time, Sandy. Can you, can you identify yourself, please? It's Leanne. <laughs> hello, Leanne. No, it's not really. It's really Helen for Tony. <laughs> hello, uh, Hel yes. I that'd make you smile, Sandy. Well, hey. actually, Helen, you're right. And uh, I must admit, I've, I have listened over the years to you ringing to Anne, and I, I've often wondered your true feelings. And perhaps now that just the two of us are having a bit of a chat like this, you might like to express them to me. Well, well Sandy, I, w I was always into blondes, except when, well, I thought Tony, after the last 20 years of broadcasting and starting a triple I might have mentioned his real highlight. What was that? No, he didn't. Well, it was, remember, the Saturday morning, Tony, I was working behind the bar at the hotel in Johnson Street after the program. Yeah. And you walked in in the curter. In the what? The cheesecloth top. <laughs> the embroidery. It's a and long time ago. You had a beard, sunglasses, Tony, mm. packet of Craven A in the Sporting Globe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that is... That is... In, and I, I, I remember you said to the boys you were with, I just wish John Schultz was back in the side today. <laughs> that, is a, that is an absolute nut And lot. Tony. What? You came up to the bar and you looked at me and said, Darling, can I have some change for the cigarette machine? <laughs> you ordered a pot, put your sporting globe on the bar, and it's been like that ever since, Tony, hasn't it? <laughs> just popping the newspaper down. And, and Sandy. Yes, Helen. I, I just want to say to you, too, that if it wasn't for Tony, I'd have stuck to blondes, and <laughs> I love you, too. Oh, for goodness. <laughs> okay. get, we'll get rid of her. We'll and you guys, you're happy to roll along. You're winning the ratings. You're obviously on extraordinarily huge contracts. I mean, life's just pretty good. Well, we just love talking about footy, and as long as there's footy, and it's going to happen for a lot longer. I mean, the footy's never been bigger, and while there's footy there to talk about, we'll talk about it. Oh, we were playing footy for the Coulda Beans. In our annual match against Tullamarine, oh, we were getting flogged. Oh, things were pretty crook. Oh, when someone yelled out, take, take a, a good, good hard look. look. Everybody, oh, well, we TTC, turned the corner, had an RHG, a red hot go. go. Well, we OTFG, open the floodgates. We got BIT back in town. Now we LOG, lifted our game, took a good hard look at ourselves. Coach came out. O-U-T, said to J-G, just go. We made a B-S, big statement, it's a W-N-B-G, whole new ball game, your L-D-B, looking down the barrel, and take a good hard look at yourselves. The Coulda Beans, and a great addition to football.